Um, so Mike, we, we, um, the, key, the key thing, when I was interviewing for this job, one of the things that was kept on coming up was engagement about um, how does UK TIN engage with the community and, and where, do, where do you think we need to spend most time? And that, that continues to be an interesting question. And I spent in the background, just by way of historical introduction, I spent 20 years at IP Access avoiding setting up a technical advisory board. Um, uh, successfully, I can say. Um, but I think UKT is a little bit of a different beast. It's a much bigger canvas. And, and I, I need an advisory board. Mike, how can the advisory board help me, in, help UKT engage around the ecosystem? Well, the first point I should say is congratulations on your appointment and this launch event. Um, I'd also say that having been chief scientific advisor in government for five years, just finished that in international trade, uh, it's a great honor to be asked to chair this advisory board as well. I think the reason the advice is needed is to actually make sure UK TIN looks inclusive, mm -hmm. to make sure that gaps in the telecoms innovation activity are identified early, and making sure also we have strong cross-industry support. All of those are good reasons for advisory board. You may wish to say, so what advice will you give? I mean, clearly we've heard some questions from the floor already, and people want to know, where is there some opportunity to highlight UK strengths? First question. Secondly, the international question, how do we collaborate effectively to make an international impact? Because we can't just make an impact in the UK. Can I also just say thanks to all the other volunteers who've agreed to join uh, the advisory board because we've got a stellar cast and that's on the website today if you need more details of that. Thank you for joining and helping. And, and that, I mean, that, the, the, the breadth of that cast, I think, is really key to that engagement question because there are, there are people on that panel on the advisory board from the fixed sector, from mobile, from the, from the uh, system integrator, the, the neutral host sector, the supply side, all, all elements, nearly all elements of the, um, the uh, ecosystem. And you know, we, from that base, you know, reaching out into those, the, the rest of the ecosystem. And on the inclusive point, it is called TIN. It's not called WIN, as in Wireless Innovation Network. It's very clearly about telecommunications as a whole, which includes satellite, which includes fixed and broadband, which includes wireless technologies. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we can deliver impact for all of those areas and all of the membership of TIN. And that's absolutely right. And that's a personal challenge for me, coming from a cellular background, um, actually huge blind spot around what's going on in fixed and satellite. And I was amazed at what's going on. You're visiting MWC for the first time for three years uh, this year, seeing what's going on in satellite, all that, that just a huge amount of activity. And, and as we've already remarked, a lot of it UK centric. We could, took 120 UK companies there, 120. I mean, that was the fourth or third largest country delegation of any at Mobile World Congress. Mm. So our impact is seen internationally. I would also add that from the broader exhibition list, there were 55 satellite companies, yeah. which was 35 more than ever before. Now, they weren't all British, but on the mix, you could see how that was changing. Yeah. There were other themes as well that which are apparent. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that diversity, that, you know, we talked about you know, changes in the business model, that, that the, the, the business that the big telcos are in um, is, is one class of business, but then we've got huge growth in, in system integrators, the dense airs, the, the fresh waves and so on, both represented on, on the advisory board and uh, the, uh, the, and the satellite side as well is just, just extraordinary diversity there. And I, and, and, but I think we need, we need more. I mean, I think just engaging beyond that advisory board into, uh, into as many of the different operators. I think every operator has a, has a different perspective and we, we want to hear from all of them. And I think, Mike, how do you think the advisory board can help with that conversation? Well, I think the second key letter in TIN is I, innovation. Uh, and innovation, if we look historically, the UK has been fourth on the Global Innovation Index mm -hmm. every year for the last 10 years or so. We are strong in patent filing. We are strong in research. We are strong in citations. We're not so good in the translational area. Mm -hmm. 
So I think we will be looking at innovation for impact or translation. Yeah. How do we get more translation of all the good research work that we already have and will have? We are not guaranteeing that we are uh, offering the funds directly, but we might point out some areas that aren't getting the impact that they should be getting. Indeed, and that's uh, another element. We've talked about that, this su supplier specialist guidance. They're allowing, you know, giving people the connections they need uh, into that community to find customers, to find partners, to find investors. Um, and that investment thing is, is an important part um, in terms of inclusivity. Uh, you know, that, that the, the getting the getting the ball rolling, the investment required to get, required to get a company off the ground. I'm very keen that we do more work with accelerators and incubators. Mm -hmm. I think that is the, the, the baseline. It's not just the university side. The baseline of accelerators need to be included <coughs> in the TIN activity. I also think the emphasis on digital rather than just telecoms itself needs to pull through on that. How do we show more digital capability beyond the, the network vendor side, if you like? Uh, that might pull through yeah. this research and innovation. And I think that, that speaks to the, that, the, the changes in business model. I think we, I mean, I, I don't, this, I'm not, this is a, a, a personal view of the way, if you've got a diversified supply chain that's actually full of interesting small companies, you need a, an integrator who can help put those together in a flexible way and then at scale and then allow that to get that so it can be delivered and deployed and operated reliably. Um, and I think that, you know, that change in, in business model is something that we need to be tracking and, and including in the conversation. I also think we need to help bridge understanding and awareness because innovation often occurs between sectors. Mm. So how do we really offer the networking yeah. activity to help with the uh, understanding and awareness? Um, I'd also point to other sectors that are funded partly by government mm. that have a much higher profile than telecoms. If we look at energy, it has a huge profile in terms of the funding councils and is well organised for different fuel types. Mm. Net zero, high profile attention. Equally, transport, they have strong plans for research support through to 2050 in transport. Telecoms is a Cinderella compared to energy mm. and and transport. Uh, so we need to rectify that and rebalance. Uh, and it has a role to play. I mean, the, the, I mean, I think something I've talked about many times in, in introducing UK TIN, what problem is it trying to solve? One of the obviously perennial issues around uh, the, the, the big telcos are, are facing primarily is their energy bill, right? Actually, how do we, um, you can make the equipment as cheap as you like and you can uh, you know, get it for free, but in the end, you've got an electricity bill to pay, and innovation that helps in that respect um, is absolutely essential. And you know, the, the you know, given the priority that it, the energy has generally, um, you know, there's a definite connection there between telecoms and energy. And that will come through in standards and our international supply chains. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure energy, as a driver of cost, is given the attention it deserves. Mm -hmm. But to have insufficient or disproportionately low R&D funding in telecoms compared to energy doesn't seem right. We also need to help the energy uh, uh, sector become more digitally efficient, mm. help the transport industry become more connected and digitally efficient. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to do with electric vehicles, for example, or connected cars. Mm. Indeed, I mean, and um, I mean, transport is, a, is, a, is an interesting one. I was at Connected North a couple of weeks ago talking about um, the impact of telecoms on or in, in, innovative changes in telecoms affecting tele, transport networks. Um, and there is a huge amount um, to be done there in terms of just getting traffic flowing more easily through cities and getting freight distributed more efficiently and changing the mode of transport. Um, interesting, it slight, sounds slightly gimmicky, but the role of drones in, in distribution, right, taking the load off uh, rail and road uh, becoming an important part. And of course, to, drive, to um, communicate with drones, <coughs> you need a telecoms network, right? So if, if not terrestrial, then satellite. So <coughs> all of these things um, kind of sp speak back to each other. And I think you know, the role of the advisory board in bringing that perspective into the consortium is pretty important. I think, I, I think we're here to advise you and TIN, UK TIN primarily, but I would expect government to call on us, to give advice from time to time. How's it going? What are the gaps in the innovation story? Yep. 
Should there be less money here and more money there? We may be asked to do those things. I, I, we need to set some processes to do that. Yeah, good point, good point. So, and, and I think the evidence-based the evidence -based opinions, I think, is a key thing. We, could, we all have an opinion about where money should be spent, but collecting the evidence to support those opinions is, is pretty important. The other thing I wanted to talk about briefly, I know we kind of actually have already overrunning. So the other thing I just wanted to pick up on um, finally is distinctiveness. So quite a few people have mentioned to me um, as, I as I took up the reins here, isn't that just UK 5G? Isn't that why? What, 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 how do you see from an advisory board point of view? You've, you've been close to both organizations, I think. So. Well, it's why I stressed at the beginning the T in telecoms. It's yeah. a telecoms innovation network. It's not just a wireless or a 5G innovation network. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is a bit of a debate as to how digital we get, you know, applied telecoms into different sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think we have to include everything which we know as telecoms. Yeah. And that will include some of the IT requirements, the cybersecurity requirements, some of the other things that aren't always talked about. Uh, photonics wasn't, hasn't typically been referred to before, but I, I think these all are key enablers, spectrum, key enabler for telecoms. But it's got to be the T for telecoms rather than just wireless. T for, te T for telecoms. There's a song there, I think, too. We were talking about Rick Rowling earlier. We can find, find some more evidence of that. Um, and the... Um, that element of uh, that the, the breadth of, of UK tin, I think, is an important thing. So we need to, um, so in terms of the, 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 the stretch from all the way to, from, uh, from universities to deployment then, in terms of, do, do you think there's enough support in the advisory board for, for all of that? I think the advisory board has been set up as a first advisory board and what I want to do at the first meeting is for each board member to self-declare their interests in individual in innovation areas to see where they can help. But also I want them to be advisory to the UK TIN membership as a whole. So once that becomes clearer, I'm sure we have a, a process. I also want to make sure there's strong outreach. So your reference early on to a calendar of events to me is very important. We need to stand out distinctively at international events as well as UK events. Um, therefore, having a calendar of events where we are present and speak about what UK TIN is doing is part of the feedback I think people will expect. I think the, I mean, that's, that's key to me, I think, is the advisory board is the advisory board to UK TIN, not just to yeah. individuals, it's, it's to the whole organisation, and thereby, but indirectly then, to the rest of the community. Excellent. Good. Our uh, time is up. Um, in fact, well over up. So... Um, time for refreshments, a cup of coffee, talk to your neighbour. <laughs>